So naming alkenes is very similar to naming alkanes, but a few differences do exist. So let's look at a few important rules that we have to use whenever we're naming alkenes. Rule number one, find the longest possible carbon chain containing all the double bonds. Rule number two, the lowest possible number value is given to the double bonds. Rule number three, if molecules contain more than one double bond, we give it a specific name. For example, two double bonds, we name it a diene. Three double bonds, we name it a triene. And rule number four, ring compounds containing double bonds are called cycloalkenes. So here we have six examples. So let's look at example A in which we're going to name our alkene. So our first and second step tells us that we have to find the longest possible carbon backbone and we have to assign our double bond the lowest possible number value. So that means we have to begin on this end. So carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. Notice in this case we have a four carbon backbone and our double bond has a one. It gets assigned a number one because our double bond begins on carbon one. If we begin numbering our backbone from this end, our carbon double bond will get a three. And since we want the lowest possible number value according to step two or rule two, this is how we label it. So we name our alkene simply one butene. So the in part simply means our double bond is found on the first position and we have a four carbon backbone. So but means we have a four carbon backbone. So let's go to example B. In example B, we have a symmetrical molecule, a symmetrical compound. And that simply means that it doesn't matter if we begin on this end or this end, we get the same alkene, the same alkene name. So let's begin counting our carbons. Carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, and carbon 4. Now, now we have two double bonds. So according to rule number 3, we have to name this compound a diene. So our name becomes 1,3-butadiene. So the diene part means we have two double bonds one on the first carbon and the second one on the third carbon. Buta simply means we have a four carbon backbone. So let's go to example C. So in example C we have the following compound. So let's begin numbering. So remember we want to find the longest possible carbon backbone that contains all the double bonds. So that means we either begin on this end and end on this end or we begin on this end and go to this end. Since we want to find the lowest possible number values we begin on this end. <clears throat> so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So we have a 7 carbon backbone. Our first double bond begins on the first carbon, the second double bond begins on the third carbon, and also on the third carbon we have this ethyl group. So this group comes first, so 3-ethyl, and then we have 1,3, 1,3-hepta, because we have a 7 carbon backbone, diene, because we have 2 double bonds. So once again, two double bonds, one on the first carbon, second one on the third carbon, we have an ethyl group on the third carbon, and we have a seven carbon backbone hepta. So three ethyl, one three uh, hepta diene for this compound. So compound D. So now we have a ring compound, a ring structure. So let's begin labeling on this guy, on this carbon. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So once again, I begin labeling or numbering on my double bond because I, I want my double bond to have the lowest possible number value. So this guy is known as 
cyclo because it's a cyclic compound and we have six so hexene so one cyclohexene or simply cyclohexene so let's go to part E or compound E so once again I want to label my compound in a way such that my double bond gets the lowest possible number value and this methyl group also gets the lowest possible number value. So I begin on this side. So one carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon, sixth carbon. So once again I have a six carbon ring and so I name this guy. So notice that my methyl group is found on the third carbon. So I name it 3-methyl 1-cyclohexene. So 3-methyl simply means our methyl group is in the third carbon and 1-cyclohexene means that my uh, double bond is found on the first carbon and we have a ring. So finally we get to compound E. So in compound E we have a cyclic six carbon uh, backbone and we have three double bonds. So let's begin labeling or numbering and actually it doesn't matter where we begin numbering or labeling because this is a symmetrical compound. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have one, three, five, so one, three, and five, cyclo, hexa, triene. So we have one, three, five represents our double bonds. We have three double bonds, so we have a triene, and we have a six-membered cyclic ring. So one, three, five, cyclo, hexa, triene, and this is also known as simply benzene. So benzene is the same thing as 135 cyclohexatriene.